This is part 57 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss private members in JavaScript. In any object-oriented programming language, classes can have private and public members. For example, a class in C-sharp can have private and public fields and functions. Here we have an example. In this employee class, notice that we have got one private field and two public fields. We also have a private function and a public function. The private members of this class that is the private field and the private function, they are available only within this employee class. They are not available to any code outside of this employee class. Whereas the public members, that is these two public fields and this public function, they are available both within the employee class as well as to any code outside of the employee class. We know that JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language, so objects in JavaScript can also have private and public fields and functions. Let's look at an example. Let's create a function here. Let's name it employee. And let's include two parameters, first name, last name. Now we want this to be a constructor function. So this constructor function is going to construct an employee object for this. And we want this employee object to have two public properties, first name and last name. So here, the employee object is going to have two public fields, first name and last name. In JavaScript, we create public fields using this keyword. So these two here are public fields. Now let's go ahead and create a private field. In JavaScript, we create a private field by using the var keyword. Let's name this private full name. So this private field will be available only within this employee constructor function. It will not be available to any code outside of this function. Now let's create a private function. Now there are two ways we can create a private function in JavaScript. We can simply nest a function inside this constructor function, something like this. Function private, let's call this get full name. So this is a private function. This function is available only inside this constructor function. It's not available to any code outside of this function. So this is one way to create a private function. The other way is by using var keyword. Var private get full name and we want that to be a function. So this is also a private function. Now let's initialize this private field using this private function. So private full name equals first name append a space and then last name. So basically we are computing the full name of the employee and we want to return the value that is present in this variable, private full name. So we've got a private function as well. Now let's create a privileged function. Now what is a privileged function? We'll discuss that in just a bit. But first, let's go ahead and create a privileged. To create a privileged function, we use this keyword this dot, let's actually name this privileged get full name. And we want this to be a function. So here, you know, this function is a privileged function. We'll understand, you know, what, why a privileged function is required in just a bit. Now, all we want this function to do is call this private function. So call private get full name and return its value back. Now let's go ahead and create a public function. To create a public function, we use the prototype property of the constructor function. What is the name of the constructor function here? It's employee. Now we use the prototype property of this employee constructor function. Now we use prototype to implement inheritance. We'll talk more about uh, prototypal inheritance in a later video session. But for now, just understand that to create a public uh, function, we use the prototype property of the 
constructor function. In our case, the name of the constructor function is employee. Dot, notice that we have a prototype property. And dot, we specify the name of our public method. Let's actually name this public get full name. And we want this to be a function. And this public function, it's going to call this privileged function. So this dot privileged get full name and return the value. Okay, so at the moment we have an employee constructor function which has got two public fields, one private field, one private function, one privileged function, and one public function. So what is a privileged function? Privileged methods are created using this keyword. We have just seen that. And public methods are created using the prototype property of the constructor function. Privileged method, so if you look at this privileged method, notice that it's calling the private method. So privileged methods can access private fields and private methods. Public methods can call privileged methods, but they cannot call private methods. So notice within this employee constructor function, um, we have a private function and a public function. Now both of them are present in the same function, same employee constructor function, but still this public function cannot directly call the private function. Okay, That's the reason we need a privileged function. So a privileged function can call a private function and a privileged function can be called by a public function. Okay. And like public methods, privileged functions are also available outside of the constructor function. So outside of this constructor function, we can access this privileged function and this public function, but we cannot access this private function and this private field. So public fields, privileged function, and public function can be accessed outside of this employee constructor function, but not the private members, that is this private field and this private function. Public fields and functions are available both inside and outside of the employee constructor function. Private fields and functions are available only inside the employee constructor function. Attempting to access private fields and properties outside of the constructor function will result in undefined error. So let's look at an example now. So we have our employee constructor function. So let's use this constructor function to construct an employee object. So here, let's create a variable. Let's name it employee equals new employee. So we're using the constructor function. And let's pass Tom as the first name and Grover as the last name. Document dot write employee dot notice that I can call public get full name and let's append an HTML break. Now let's go ahead and call the privileged function as well. So when I press dot, notice that in the IntelliSense it shows you know, privileged function and the public function. So let's call our privileged function, privileged get full name. Remember, both public and privileged functions are accessible outside of the containing constructor function. Now let's also access the private field. Now, what is the name of the private field? Uh, I mean, private function. The name of the private function is private get full name. So let's try to access that here. First of all, notice that when I press dot, I don't see the name of that private function in the IntelliSense. You know, it indirectly says you cannot call it outside of the function, outside of the constructor function. But let's try to call that and see what's going to happen. So the name of the function is private get full name. Let's copy that and let's try to call it. And let's also try to call the private field. So here we have these two public fields. These are definitely accessible. You can actually access a public field. When I say employee dot, notice that I can see first name, I can see last name. So that's a public field. So that's going to print the value. But then let's try to access the private field. And the name of the private field is private full name. So let's copy that and try to 
call that outside of the containing constructor function. All right. So with all this code, let's run this in debug mode. Let's actually put a breakpoint here. Oh, it already executed. So let's actually break this. So let's throw in a breakpoint. Let's run this one more time. So it calls the employee constructor function, and we should have an employee object here. So we are calling public get full name. That should be called without any error. And privileged function should also be called without any error. Now we are trying to call the private function. Let's see what's going to happen. First of all, look at this. When I hover the mouse over, it says uh, private get full name is undefined. Similarly, when I hover the mouse over uh, private field name, look at this private full name undefined. Okay, so the private members of the constructor function are not available outside of that constructor function. Can we modify a private field outside of the constructor function? Remember, private fields are not accessible outside. Okay, so obviously the straight answer is no, you can't. Now let's actually look at an example. So here, the private field name is private full name, right? So let's actually. Now, when we try to do, do this, employee dot private full name, it throws undefined error. We have just seen that. Now let's actually do this. Employee dot private full name equals ABC. Now, what is this going to do? Now, this line here says add a field called private full name. This is actually going to be a public field. Add a public field to the employee object with the name private full name. So we are adding this field to the employee object on the fly dynamically. Now, if you look at the private field name, the private field name is also the same private full name. So this is a private field within the constructor function. And here, to the employee object, we are adding a public field with the same name. So is this going to change the value that is present in this private field? The answer is no. They are two different things. This is a private field. And the scope of this is only within that function. Outside of this employee constructor function, you know, this private field does not exist. Here, whatever we are adding to the employee object, that is, you know, a public field. You know, incidentally, it it happened to have the same name as that of the private field. Okay, so let's actually prove that they are two different things by calling get public get full name, and then we'll again try to actually print the value that is present in private full name public property. OK, so this is a public field. So let's throw in a breakpoint and let's run this in debug mode. So let's press F10. So we have the employee object now. At this point, when I hover the mouse over, look at this, I'm trying to access private full name. You know, the employee object does not know anything about it outside of that constructor function. That's the reason it says employee.private full name is undefined. And after that, I am dynamically adding a property to the employee object called with the name private full name. So this will be added as a public field. So when I press F10, look at this now, when I expand this employee object, notice that it also have a private full name public field, and that is initialized with ABC, whatever value we have. Now let's call this um, get full name method. So it goes into the you know get full name function, which calls you know privileged function. So let's press F11. So that's go though goes into our privileged function. And this privileged function is calling our private function. So let's press F11 now. So it goes to the private function. Now when I press F10 here, look at this. This private function, that contains a value of Tom Grover. So this is our private field within the constructor function. Now if I go back here, you know, it's still in debug mode. 
and this private field contains Tom Grover that's the name of our employee and if we go here and look at the employee object and when I expand this look at this this private full name contains ABC so this proves that these are two different things within the function you know that's a private field and here this is a public field and you have just seen that the values are two different things so now when we press F10 so it comes back from the function so the call came back and then look at this private full name this public field still have that value of ABC so when I press F5 on the browser we should see ABC so definitely those are two different things this is a public field that happen to have the same um, name as that of the private field within the employee constructor function so private fields we declare them using the var keyword inside the object and can only be accessed by private functions and privileged methods public fields are declared using this keyword and are available outside the object private functions there are two ways to create them you know we can either create a private field using var keyword like i mean var keyword like this or you know like a nested function inside another function like this using the function keyword and these private functions can only be called by privileged methods we have seen that as well privileged methods these are declared using this keyword and they are available both within and outside of the containing um, object public methods these are defined by using the objects prototype property and are available both within and outside the object thank you for listening and have a great day